want to place another view for, tic for this particular model. Let's go back to the drawing view creation. And we may want to create a uh, top view. Change the size a little bit. Place this on our draft sheet. The next thing I want to do then is build the dimensions or create the dimensions that are representative of the dimensions that change from one family member to another. One of those dimensions is the distance from center to center. In the center to the outside center of the long of the leg. Represent the length of the leg. We also have a dimension to the hole in the center. We also have a dimension to the radius on the uh, outside edge of the part. So underneath the parts list you're going to find the family of parts table. After I select the view it automatically shows me the variables that are changing from one family member to another. I go to the data tab, I can reorder those variables, how they're going to show up in the table. And you can see that it places it on the draft sheet uh, at our cursor location. At this point we can go in and modify the table how it looks by dragging the handle points to change the size of each particular field. Very quickly we'll just resize this table. Get it all on one line. So here you can see all the dimensions, the A, B, D, and H dimensions, uh, which are represented by the dimensions that we placed just a minute ago. And so what we may want to do is select our table and link a particular dimensional value to a variable. So in this case, A is represented of 9.5. If I click that, you can see that it changes to an A. From the drop down, I'll pick B. D is the end diameter there, and then uh, H is the hole size. You can see how quickly and easily we can build that family parts table. If I go back to its properties again, you can see that all those values have now been updated. Uh, we could add a title to our family parts table. We could also go in and add uh, another column. So if we wanted to insert another column, insert it after the selected column. We may wish to format that column or something like comments. If we leave the text field blank, it will allow us to input a separate text column for every family member. If we do apply some text there, it will be applied to every member. We can also extract information about each of those family members. For instance, I may wish to uh, know the created date for each family member, and I want to extract that from the parts themselves. So once I add the comments, I'll make that field just a little bit wider and then we're going to update the family of parts table and you can see that's going to be populated with the date in which those family members were created. And So you can see how we can easily build this family of parts table now uh, creating this tabulated drawing in Solid Edge Draft. Look at a couple other new enhancements. Um, an enhancement for snapping. If I select the line command and I just hover over a line and I click the E on the keyboard, you can see that it automatically snaps to the nearest endpoint. Likewise, if I'm hovering over and I click M, it snaps to the midpoint. One very, very powerful function is uh, the ability to create an intersection. So again, I'm just going to highlight several of these lines just by dragging the cursor over one and then clicking the I, you can see that it shows, shows me through quick pick which intersection I want to select even though that intersection is not even uh, graphically visible. Another thing that can be a problem sometimes is finding the exact center of a particular arc. So if I click this line command and you can see as I select each of these circles you can see that all the centers are very close and it's difficult to pick up the center point to the outside uh, radius. However, if I hover over that outside radius and I click the C on the keyboard, it automatically takes me to the center of the particular radius that, uh, or diameter that I had selected. Very, very nice functionality. 
And finally, what I want to show you is that we've added the ability to create a break gap in draft. So here we have several dimensions that are crossing over each other. And what we want to do is add a break gap in the extension line. So by simply selecting a dimension and right mouse button clicking, we can add the projection line break. And you can see that those breaks are added uh, automatically for us. Now those are associative break lines so that if I move a dimension inside of that break line, you can see that that break line heals uh, and that if I bring it back, it is associative. You can also see if I add that projection line break in this particular uh, callout, goes to the opposite side, that, that will track to the opposite side. So very, very nice functionality uh, for adding these projection line breaks uh, in the draft environment.